Hello. I'm just going to do a quick little intro before the actual intro. But don't worry, there's going to be timestamps in this long video. I left it long because it's an educational video. There's no real need for quick, snappy editing masterpiece work. So I left the full lessons in. I figured that would be the easiest way to learn this style and these songs. But like I said, there'll be timestamps so you can skip ahead if you'd like to go to the more advanced stuff. Lastly, I'm going to leave a link to the Earl Family Aftermath GoFundMe. If you'd like to donate, that would be great. Uh, it was started by Justin's wife, Jennifer, uh, after Justin's passing, and you can donate to the family there. Rest in peace, Justin. All right, let's get into the lesson. Hello there, my name is Mark, and today we are going to be learning how to play guitar like this man, Justin Towns Earl. Let's do it. This is a video I've always thought about making. For various reasons I've put it off, but I think it's probably the right time. So I'll make a very short introduction before we get right into it. Just a little information about why this style is awesome, why you should learn it, um, and a little bit about me as well. Cool. So really quickly, I'll just introduce myself. My name's Mark. I've been playing guitar for about 10 years, um, give or take, and about three or four years into playing guitar, I realized upon finding Justin Towns Earl uh, that he basically was playing in a way more advanced version of what I was doing. And so I got to studying and eventually learned how to play his style. Hopefully in this video I can give you a basic understanding of what that style is, when it's effective to use it, um, and teach you a little bit about Justin's music along the way. So why learn this style? I mean, if you've ever heard Justin Towns Earl play guitar, uh, you would know the answer to that question. But in a general sense, part of what made Justin so great was his unique picking style. It also incorporates elements of rhythm guitar, lead guitar, and percussion. Essentially, your thumb acts as your bass, your index finger acts as your kind of lead guitar, and it also acts as sort of a snare or a little percussive element to slap the guitar. Quite literally, we're gonna be slapping the guitar today. And what this does is it makes it sound like there's a lot more going on than just one man playing guitar. So let's go over the things you're gonna need. Number one, this thing, a capo. Obviously, probably should have mentioned this first, gonna need a guitar. A tuner would be nice. I'm assuming you already have one. The capo is really the thing you're gonna need. Also, you should know that you can get blisters from this playing style. I guess it's physically demanding on the fingers, is how I'd phrase it. But there's interviews, uh, one that rings a bell is a KEXP interview uh, that Justin Towns Earl did in, I think, 2009, where he actually shows his blister. But outside of that, not a lot of issues. All right, let's do it. The basics. The first thing uh, you need to know with the basics is that we're gonna be using a C formation chord open chord. So make sure to have your capo on the 5th fret and we're going to be playing a C like I said. So I think it's smart to base the lesson off of various songs of Justin's and work from there. I think that's the easiest way to translate his music. And the first one we're going to start with is uh, Let the Waters Rise off of his uh, initial EP Yuma. Probably the most rudimentary basic way to play it and just keep building as we go and explaining more. Cool. So, like I said, capo on the fifth fret, we're playing a C formation. I've got everything zoomed in on my fingers here. The basic idea for this entire method, I'm just gonna play it now. We're gonna do a very simple one, two, three, four rhythm. On one, we're gonna be doing a bass note, and on two, we're gonna be doing a slap, same thing, three and four. Three is gonna be a bass note, and four is gonna be a slap. The only thing outside of the C formation that I'm gonna be doing, in terms of the chord, is moving the bass note, so that what you're gonna be picking with your thumb, up to what would be the high E string if you're in standard tuning. So the only changes are gonna be, without playing the actual song, just that little jump there. 
So let's get into it. Let's just start with the most basic way to play it. It's gonna be bass note on one, slap on two, bass note on three, slap on four. So that's the basic way to play it. Obviously there's a lot of things you can add on which we'll get into, um, but I'm just gonna play that for a little while so you can get used to it, all right? You may have noticed that I threw in a couple of extra notes there. That's because as your index finger slides down, it's got to come back up because it's going to do the same slap on the three as it did on the one. So what you can do is on your index fingers way back up is slap a note on the way there or a hammer down. There are a lot of things you can do, but I'll just start with uh, Again, playing the one, two, three, four, the same way we were just playing it, but I'm just gonna add the root note, which will be played on the B string, if you were in standard tuning, after each slap as I come up. Here we go. Again, just bringing up that index finger and on its way up, hitting that B string. Cool. And that little element there where you add that extra touch with your index finger is sometimes what makes this guitar picking sound so great because you can add so much with your index finger. So now that you know how to bring your index finger up and add that a little extra flare um, for each bass note, in between each bass note I should say, I say we just go through the chord progression. I'll probably just do the simple one, two, three, four slap without actually, actually adding the, the B string note. The chord progression in open chords is gonna be C, A minor, F, and G. So not too hard, let's run through it, all right? So I'm going to do that chord progression for just a bit longer and I might add a little extra notes here and there but I won't go crazy uh, and this is just for repetition for you. Here we go. So if you have that down, then you basically understand the premise of what's going on here. Get your thumb down to doing the bass notes. And then once you have that down, get your index finger involved. Maybe that's overly simplistic, but that's the truth. And you just have to get used to slapping the guitar, get your fingers used to that rhythm. And then most of the songs, maybe I shouldn't say most, but a good bit of the songs that Justin plays will come a little bit easier for you. All right, so getting to the, all right, so getting into the more advanced stuff, 
I'm gonna do Ain't Glad I'm Leaving next on guitar. It's a great example of what we just talked about, using your index finger, your lead finger, as your bass finger or thumb, I guess it's technically not a finger, is playing. And I guess I should tell you where I am right now. I'm in a capo fifth fret, uh, and I'm playing an E formation, which gives me a G chord. If you're in standard tuning, take your capo, put it on three, play an E formation, and that should be uh, that should be a G. Again, ain't glad I'm leaving. So, bass note might be a little flat right there, but I'm gonna keep going. And then you're gonna hit your your B string here. So if you were in standard, it would be your E string as well as your B string, your low E. And you're gonna play those two strings at the same time. But you're gonna hammer down on the second fret relative to the capo, of course, on your B string. Perfect. That's it. That's the start of the song. But as you come up from hammering down that B string with your index finger, like we talked about earlier, it's still down here. You might as well hit something else. Hit that high E. Just like that. Just that combination of those three things and then a slap. Just like that. And after that slap, make sure you hit the B string open again. So. And for the next section, you're gonna wanna hit the fourth fret relative to the capo on your high E. And after you hit that high note, when you're coming up, it should be easier because you're coming right after a slap, just give that high E a hit. So from the top to where we are, So from there on, you're going to want to hit the high E and then come down and slap as well after that. So you're hitting it twice there. And for the second roll around on that same progression, um, you're going to do the same thing except you're going to give the little fourth fret E string note a little slap. So that's the general specific on how you want to run through this song, at least the very basic parts of it. From there on, follow the melody, and you'll figure it out. There's a lot of little hits he does, and he changes things frequently when he plays live, so it's a bit hard to completely keep track of. But I will run through the tune a little bit to give you a taste of what it sounds like, and perhaps give you a chance to play over it. 